w a s d i k a Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today I am making one of the most classic Southern Thai dishes ever. It is something called kua kling. So kua means to toss something in a pan. Kling means to roll, like you know, a ball rolling on the ground. I have no idea why it is called kua kling. I guess the pork kind of rolls around in the pot. I don't know, but it is so so delicious and actually really really easy. Now the reason why I like making this dish is because when I'm in Thailand and you buy this dish, it is always extremely spicy. Even for me. I can't usually have it at a restaurant, so to be able to customize how spicy it is makes all the difference. So let's get started. So kua kling is usually ground pork, but you can use other kinds of ground meat as well, tossed with a special curry paste, and it's sort of this rustic dish that you can toss with your rice, and it's super delicious. So let's take a look at the curry paste. So I have here some dried chili. So I'm using our bowl chilies, which has quickly become my favorite chilies for making Thai curry paste. It's nice and red. It's got not too much spice, so you can put more, get a lot of chili flavor without it being super super spicy. I'm just cutting them down and shake off all the seeds to make sure it is not too hot. I am going to just put this in a spice grinder here. Blitz it up. Ooh, try not to breathe the fumes in. What? There's like one guy that didn't get blitzed. That is so strange. Doing that again. That has got to be it. Ta da! All right. And now I'm also going to add some black pepper into this. Whew. <laughs> It's uh, spicy in here. So I'm gonna add some black pepper into here, and that is one of the unique things about Kuakling is it uses black pepper. If you've seen my other curry paste, it's always white pepper if there's any pepper in it. Whew. Ta da! So I'm gonna finish the rest of this with my mortar and pestle, but of course, if you've got one of those stick blenders like I used in my masaman curry episode, feel free to use that as well. I've got here a stalk of lemongrass, but I'm going to just use half for the paste, and the other half I'm gonna toss it in with the stir fry. I like to have bits of lemongrass; it just it just looks cooler to have. Bits other than just the pork in there. I've got here some galangal slices that are frozen, and before I put this in, I'm going to give it a quick chop just to help it a little bit, so you're not having to pound so hard. There goes that. That's probably a little too much, but that's okay. Curry paste, by the way, the measurements of the herbs never have to be exact. It's just a general ratio that you want to get right. But don't worry about it. You've got a little bit extra, a little bit too little of of something. Okay. So now this is the key ingredient of kua kling. This little knobbly guy here. This is turmeric, fresh turmeric. If you cannot find fresh, you can use powdered. Now I freeze my turmeric as well, and I'm only going to need about two inches. Of this, so just one of that. Now I don't peel it. You can if you want to. All right. So now it's sort of a rough paste, but it's getting really kind of wet and squishy now. So I'm going to add my dry spices into here, and the dry spice is going to help absorb some of that liquid, so you don't end up splashing turmeric juices on yourself, which will never come off your clothing. So all of that goes in a little brush. And now I also want to add my shallots and garlic in there. So shallots and garlic is a total classic curry paste ingredient. Now at this point, you want to make sure you don't have any big chunks, but you don't have to get it super fine. Like if you were to make a like a soupy curry, because it's a stir fry, there's going to be lots of big pork chunks. So as long as you have no big chunks, you'll be fine. A little bit of salt, and that's going to add some friction. If you have coarse grain salt, that'll be even better. And now, of course, this is after all a curry paste, and it is southern food, so we're definitely gonna add some fermented shrimp paste or kapi here. And you'll notice I've been wrapping this, so because if I leave this open, it will just continue to perfume this place, and we'll have shrimp paste in Adam's curtains. So this is going to add some umami. It's going to add saltiness. If you are trying to make this vegetarian, you can absolutely. Uh, Leave it out. I would recommend adding a little bit of miso paste instead to get that same umami funkiness. And the curry paste is pretty much done. So we're pretty much ready to cook. As I said, this is rustic home cooking, so very few ingredients. 
except for the curry base, of course. So I've got here some ground pork, but as I said, you can do some ground beef, ground chicken, anything, even crumbled tofu or a TVP, little pieces of TVP will work as well. In addition to what we've looked at, I've got here some kefir lime leaves. This is so important in this dish. This is one of the main aroma that you want, in fact, in the curry paste, if you have kefir lime zest, which I don't right now, but if you do, add that into the curry paste. This is a citrusy aroma that you want. So what I did here was I take the leaves, I remove the center stem, because that can be a little tough, and then you want to julienne it as finely as you can, because these leaves are really tough. If it's thick, it'll sort of get in your teeth and it's not comfortable. Okay, I'm also gonna throw in some chilies, which I've chopped but left whole. This is for color and also because this is supposed to be a super spicy dish, but I'm toning it down. By leaving this in, people who want to make it spicy can sort of like mush this up and incorporate it into their part of the bowl if they want to. So it's a, you know, it's a good option to have. And that is it, let's get cooking. So I'm going to add just a little bit of oil in my wok here. And then all of the curry paste goes in. I know that looks like a lot of curry paste, but trust me, you want all that flavor. And when you weren't looking, I put on an apron because <laughs> this stuff is going to stain. Now, as the curry paste is sauteing, it might get a little dry, at which point you can add a little splash of water or chicken stock, make sure it's unsalted, just to loosen it up a bit. Ooh, once it starts to smell really good, like chili fumes in the air, go in with the pork or whatever meat you are using and just toss as fast as you can. Again, if it feels like it's sticking a little bit, you can go in with a splash of water to deglaze. But at the end, you want this to be dry, so don't add too much water, okay? Now I'm gonna add some seasoning. It's not quite done yet. I've got here some sugar, sugar, fish sauce, of course. And to balance out the saltiness and the spiciness, you're gonna need a little bit of sugar. Oh, <coughs> here we go again. Adam is desperately looking for something to cover his mouth. <laughs> We're almost done. Oh, now you look at this, just think about the possibilities. You can put this in as an omelet filling. You can just, Mm, like a sloppy joe, but with cooking on top. Oh, that would be good. So now towards the end, I have some liquid. I'm going to blast the heat and try to dry that off. It doesn't have to be bone, bone dry, but you don't want too much pooling liquid, right? All right, so that's pretty dry. Like if I'm looking at this, I don't have any pooling liquid, I'm good. I'm gonna throw in the kefir lime leaves and the chilies. Turn that off and just use the residual heat to distribute the flavor of the lime leaves. Ooh, that's so pretty all of a sudden. Oh, of course, that lemongrass that I saved for the end. I knew it looked like it was missing something. There we go. And that's it, it's done. Now imagine if you had the curry paste made in advance, maybe you make a whole bunch, freeze it, your dinner could come together in minutes. Ugh, smells so good. I love that smell of turmeric. Just have to be careful not to get it on my cutting board because that will never come off. And of course, if you want, you can add a little pinch of beautifully julienned kefir lime leaves. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is some legit Southern Thai food, kua kling. You have to have this with rice. I'm telling you, this is intense. So I've got some nice jasmine rice here. Oh, it's so good. It's still really spicy, but it's manageable. I can actually enjoy the flavors of all the herbs and spices that we had. Oh. Intense is the word. Did you see how much curry paste that was? And it's not that much food. That's what you want. Intense flavor. 
you toss it with rice and it is a party in your mouth. Wow, you have got to try this. I mean, there are very few restaurants that sell this. So if you want to try this, you got to make it yourself and it's so easy, right? So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an episode and click the little bell icon so you get a notification every time I post a video. And if you love the show, you want to support us, check out our Patreon link in the description below. And I will see you next time for your next delicious and hot Thai meal. Ah, why is this so complicated? <laughs>